this uh, summation identity via the principle of mathematical induction. Okay, before I go through that, I'm going to do a little bit of scratch work. A lot of times the insight that comes from these is, is not done in, in isolation here. You have to do some work off to the side. So I'm going to take that expression that we had, that we're trying to show that it's equal to 3 times something cubed plus 6 times something squared plus something. And I'm going to put inside of the parentheses here the quantity m plus 1. And I'm going to expand this a bit. And this is going to give me some insight for what's going to happen in the induction step. So here we get a 3. And m plus 1 cubed would be m cubed plus 3m squared plus 3m plus 1. And then this quantity here would be 6 times m squared plus 2m plus 1 and then on the end it's an m plus 1. So remember this truth, right? This right here is just using uh, the binomial theorem or just by our regular old distribution. So we're going to use that fact as we go through our proof by mathematical induction. Okay, so here's what we want to show. We want to show the sum from k equals 1 to n of 3k minus 1 times 3k plus 2 is equal to 3n cubed plus 6n squared plus n for natural numbers. So proceeding by induction, our base case is going to be n equals 1. So if n equals 1, then what do we have on the left hand side? Well on the left hand side we only have k equals 1 to 1, so there's only going to be one quantity over there and that's going to be 3 times 1 minus 1 and it's going to be 3 times 1 plus 2. 3 times 1 minus 1 is 2. 3 times 1 plus 2 is 5. And that's equal to 10. Okay, what do we have on the right-hand side? And on the right-hand side, we have, let's see, substitute in 1 for n. So we'd get 3 times 1 cubed plus 6 times 1 squared plus 1, which is 3 plus 6 plus 1, which is also 10. So the base case holds because when we replace our variable, our n, with 1 on either the left or the right, we get a true statement. We get 10 equals 10. So this doesn't prove the claim, but it proves that it is true in the case of n equals 1. Okay, second stage is to do an induction hypothesis. So for the inductive hypothesis, we'll assume that if we were to take the sum from k equals 1 to m of 3k minus 1 times 3k plus 2, that this would be equal to 3m cubed plus 6m squared plus m. And here's the big difference between an induction hypothesis and what we're trying to prove, is that we're going to assume that this is true for some m. So this is existential. I'm only assuming it's true for some m, whereas what I'm trying to prove is that it's true for all n. So I'm trying to prove a universal statement, but here in the induction hypothesis, I'm only assuming it's true in one particular case, the m case. And notice by the base case, we know that it is true in some case. Okay, so when we move now on into the induction step, what we would do here is we would consider, so here let's consider the sum from k equals 1 to m plus 1 of our statement. So we're going to move on one step on the ladder. So here we get 3k minus 1, 3k plus 2, and we're going to work with this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to split it into two pieces. First piece, k equals 1 to m of 3k minus 1 times 3k plus 2. So that's the first m of the terms, and so I'm ignoring the m plus 1th term. So now let's throw that m plus 1th term in. What would that be? Well, that would be replacing k with m plus 1. So we'd have 3m plus 1 minus 1 multiplied by 3 m plus 1 plus 2. Okay, what is this equal to? Well, based on the inductive hypothesis, in the inductive hypothesis we assumed that 
this quantity was equal to 3m cubed plus 6m squared plus m. Right? And then what do we have over here? It looks like over here we have a 3m plus 3 minus 1, so that would be a 3m plus 2. And then we have a 3m and a 3 and a 2, so that would be a 3m plus 5. Okay, now I'm going to expand a little bit here. So I have a 3m cubed. I have a 6m squared plus a 9m squared from this when I distribute. So that's going to be a total of 15m squared. Then I'm going to have 15m from there and 6m from here for 21 on top of the one we already had. So that's 22m. And then finally, for my constant term, it looks like I'm going to have a 2 times a 5, which is a 10. Okay, now for the sneaky step. So in this step, what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this up appropriately. I'm going to make this a 3m cubed. Off of the 3m cubed, I'm now going to take 9m squared. But that's not all, because we had 15m squared. So let me put the 6m squared over here. So 9 and 6 is, of course, 15. Now I have 9m's, so I'm going to put 9m's here, but that means that out of those 22, I still have, uh, let's see, like 13 of them left. I'll put 12 of them here, so that's 12m, and then I still have an m left over, so there's my 12 and 9 is 21, plus 1 is 22, so that's all of those. And now I have to put in my constant term, which is a 10, so I'm going to put a 3 here, I'm going to put a 6 here for 9, and then go put a 1 there for 10. Okay, what do I have here now? So this becomes a 3 times an m cubed plus 3m squared plus 3m plus 1 plus 6 times m squared plus 2m plus 1 plus that little m plus 1 hanging off at the end. Now, if you look at that really closely and you remember the discussion that we did at the beginning, the very beginning before I started the proof here, you'll notice that this is precisely equal to 3 times m plus 1 cubed plus 6 times m plus 1 squared plus m plus 1. And this is exactly what we wanted, because this looks exactly like the statement in the problem, but with an m plus 1 inserted in, because we were starting from m, or going up to m plus 1 instead of just m. Okay, so after that inductive hypothesis, which assumed the induction hypothesis and then moved and showed it in the m plus 1 case, we now get to conclude that by the principle of mathematical induction, the sum of k equals 1 through n of 3k minus 1 times 3k plus 2 is equal to 3n cubed plus 6n squared plus n for all natural numbers. And this completes our proof.